Good afternoon, everyone. Can I just take it? Uh, thank you for being here today. Uh, wanted to address uh, the topics of safety and security within uh, Austin ISD uh, School District. And uh, the most important thing we wanted you to know, is obviously, is safety and security is our top priority, as it is for everyone uh, at this point in time. Uh, I'd like to talk about some of the um, some of the provisions that that we and steps that we have taken. Uh, obviously, we assess every threat, and we want to do as much as we can and be as thorough as we can in investigating uh, those threats that occur uh, throughout the school year. Uh, secondly, uh, no one's allowed to enter our campus uh, or our buildings without either key or card access or checking in uh, to our offices. <clears throat> we, uh, we have officers that are posted in our uh, secondary campuses and we regularly uh, visit our elementary schools. $22 million uh, from our last, bud uh, last bond uh, is being used um, in upgrading our alarm and camera systems. And then uh, obviously repairs uh, that need to be done on our campuses take top priority in uh, getting handled. All of our staff have been trained on our uh, standard operational procedures when it comes to uh, holes, secures, shelters in place, evacuations, lockdowns. We're doing security audits on all of the uh, exterior uh, security features on all of our campuses to address any deficiencies or areas that need to be hardened. Uh, each principal is reviewing our safety uh, and security protocols um, and procedures. We are finishing the installation of uh, bullet resistant film in our entryway windows and doors. It's paid for by uh, state grant money. In 2022 bond, uh, we're proposing that uh, every campus will have a vestibule uh, that will create a secondary layer of security for anyone entering the building would actually be funneled directly through the office uh, rather than have direct access into the campus. And then we're looking at upgrades on locks and fences uh, around the campuses. Uh, well, our, uh, our mental health division works very closely with our social emotional learning department and our counseling department to try and identify students that may be in need of support uh, and then also identify any uh, potential situations that may arise from those uh, encounters to make sure that we're providing the, the support that's necessary to our families and our students. Uh, every uh, high school is uh, assigned two officers. Every middle school uh, is assigned one officer and then regularly patrol the elementary schools. Are those considered school resource officers or are they just part of your staff? Well, by definition of the law, we're school-based law enforcement because we're housed within the school district. We actually are employed by the school district. SROs, by definition of the law, are uh, agencies that are contracted to work for a school uh, and provide security services in a school. So it's a generic term that they use with SROs, uh, but the, the real title is school-based law enforcement officers. But yes, SROs. SROs are, are different than your, your officers. 
SROs are, are, are typically, uh, I'll give you an example. In our area, uh, you look at Westlake. Westlake contracts with Travis County Sheriff's Department. Under the law, Sheriff's Department would be considered SROs on their campus. We are considered school-based law enforcement because we are actually hired and employed by the school district. Uh, it's a play on words. It's, we're talking about semantics, but uh, we all perform uh, SRO duties. Uh, we've not discussed that at this point. What are one of your goals for the academic year? Uh, keep the kids safe. Number one priority. I mean, that's what we're here for, is to keep the kids safe and then use all the resources that we have available to us to make sure and ensure that we do that. In light of what happened in Uvalde, what are you doing any differently? Well, um, for those of you who don't know, there have been over 130 new uh, ISD police departments established since 2017. We've been in existence since 1986. So a lot of the stuff that we're doing are things that our other districts are trying to do, the things that we've had in place for decades. Um, so obviously, you know, is being uh, officers being a lot more vigilant in, in their in their patrol. Um, obviously, when you're talking about two officers on a high school campus, there's a lot of kids, and so. Um, we uh, now have our security personnel have come under the police department, so they will be assisting in another set of eyes and ears, uh, keeping track of people who may be coming on campus who are not uh, supposed to be on campus and directing those visitors to the right, uh, right location so they can come through and be screened. Are there any additional security systems that you think can be put in place? Uh, well, it would be nice to have millions millions of dollars to do you know a lot of uh, a lot of things uh, but I think that with the with the resources that the district has in place that we put in uh, the appropriate security features at this point How many patrol officers do you have? Uh, currently we have seven officers uh, that are assigned to our patrol division A lot of it depends on the workload and where uh, our resources are being drawn to. Um, so it's kind of hard to put a hard number on each day, uh, but their responsibility is to check in with the principals that in their sector um, each, each, uh, each day as much as possible. Do you know what a day looks like for a school-based law <laughs> I don't think in police work there's ever um, a standard day, and we teach officers that. Uh, there is no real standard uh, standard day, and it would be very difficult to say every day this and this this goes through this process. Um, I'd say every day officers uh, show up to work knowing that there are there's a possibility of things not going right each day, and and just trying to act accordingly. As I say, we we are typically uh, proactive, uh, but a lot of our resources are spent on. Uh, reactive things. Um, you never know when um, a disturbance will happen. Uh, you never know when an upset parent may come to the campus. Uh, it's hard to predict what's going to happen in a day. Um, so it's it's difficult to put a standard. Here's what an everyday officer would experience. Would you say that they, uh, you would ask them to check in with their principals once a day, something like that. What other Oh, the patrol division? Uh, the patrol division is, is kind of going around assisting the, the campuses on top of the mil elementary schools that they are assigned in their sector. Many times they may get a situation that uh, we have at the campus that, let's say a big, a big fight breaks out and they need additional resources. The patrol division is typically who responds to something like that. Absolutely. Like, uh, I don't think we should ever get to a point of getting used to it. I think there's always in the back of our mind the fear of what if this happens and how are we going to respond to it and 
we spend a lot of time in the summer uh, training and preparing our officers to be prepared for anything that may come out of the way. And uh, I, I don't want us to uh, be remiss if I didn't mention, we obviously, our schools are in the middle of a large city, metropolitan city. There are things that happen outside of our schools that draw our resources as well. If there's a bank robbery um, and the suspect leaves, leaves, the, leaves the bank on foot, we're going to dispatch officers to the closest schools to make sure that those schools are safe, right? And so that's why I say it's difficult to have what is a typical day because I never know and we never know what, it, what a typical day is going to look like. Um, it's dictated to us rather than, you know, us dictating to it. Yes, ma'am. Can you, can you explain that in a little bit more detail and make sure I understand your question? Yes, ma'am. Well, obviously, from the police department, all schools uh, have the same. We're going to prioritize it based, as I said, on the resources and where they're needed. When it comes to how the funds are allocated, that's a question that would probably be better addressed by someone else. Uh, I don't. That's not a decision that the police department makes as to which schools are on the list for X, Y, and Z. I apologize. I can get that information for you. Uh, we understand their apprehension. Um, we, uh, I want to ensure them that we're going to use every resource possible to ensure that their kids are safe at campus. Uh, if kids don't feel safe, they can't learn. Um, so we're going to do our, our, our best uh, to ensure um, that their, our campuses remain safe. That's a very good question. Uh, I would say, you know, security, safety and security is everyone's responsibility. It's our students, it's our parents. Uh, if they hear or see something, say something. Um, I would also say it's our teachers, our administrators, uh, our campus custodians. Um, everybody plays a role in this. The more eyes and ears we have, uh, the better and safer our campuses can be. Um, we've had students, we've had parents that have actually given us tips on things in the past that have been very beneficial and so I would encourage parents to continue um, offering information if something doesn't sound right or they're concerned about something uh, to call us. Yes ma'am. Uh, well, we've been doing this for some time, uh, as I mentioned earlier. We work very closely with our social emotional learning and our counseling department um, in tandem with them uh, to ensure that, uh, first of all, police are not are the last ones called when a kid's in crisis. Um, we're only used when a counselor's having difficulty either getting a hold of a parent to get them to the campus or there's an imminent threat on campus with a student that that student's safety becomes premier and then responding to that to ensure that the student can stay safe until we can get them into an environment that's better suited where whether it be the parent being there and helping us out or whatever resources are going to be needed and whatever support they're going to be needed. In addition to that, we work very closely with our, our uh, local mental health authority, integral care, and the mobile crisis outreach team. Uh, so when a student goes into crisis, many times we will call on those resources to come in and do mental health assessments to assist our counselors. Uh, we had a training last week and all of our mental health stakeholders, including our local hospitals, uh, were present. Uh, Victim Services with Austin Police Department uh, and Travis County Sheriff's Department was there to talk about supports that they offer 
uh, to our to our students and to our community. And so we are work we work very closely with our community stakeholders and have for the last uh, ten years uh, to make sure that we surround that child and that family with as much support as possible. Yes, ma'am. We, we do the the school district has uh, a uh, has a third party that helps and assists us uh, with monitoring uh, threats um, or outcries it could not necessarily be a threat it could just be a student that's in a very dark place and needs assistance right and so uh, and then helping us we have a protocol for each one of those that we respond to to support the families and to support the students uh, it is not a, a, it is not necessarily a crime to, to be in a mental health crisis, and so we don't want to victimize somebody uh, or criminalize that behavior, but also provide understanding in those cases where it's appropriate. What is the agency that you guys work with? Uh, the name of the company? Yeah. Uh, it's a gaggle. Mm -hmm. it's software. software. And then there's other agencies that help us out. Yes, yeah. Uh, Austin Regional Intelligence Center. And do people just report things they see on social media? Absolutely. We had one just the other day. Uh, it didn't turn out to be anything, but it was good that parents saw something and they said something. And that's always very beneficial because uh, hopefully to prevent things like postings on social media where, you know, we don't, we hear about it, we can go out and actually investigate it and make sure that. The student is safe, but also make sure the campus remains safe. Yes, yes sir. Um, any tips for parents when it comes to sending their child off to school, whether it's on their bus or walking? Uh, obviously, it's the same thing that we've always said. You know, uh, you want it age appropriate. Um, there, are, there are always a potential for threats to be out in our amongst our city. So, if a child is too young uh, or mentally not ready. Uh, to be walking alone to school, then we would encourage parents to, to try and, when possible, uh, we understand that some of our parents are in situations where I was raised by a single mother. Um, so, you know, you do the best with what you have. Uh, but when the situation can dictate, uh, hopefully, you know, they can get them uh, to school or at least accompany them to school or have them walk with another, with another student or family. One more time, I'm sorry. Uh, have any new protocols have been established to access the institutions? To access the institutions? Right, the uh, well, yeah, we, we have, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the security personnel are going to be helping this year. Uh, they, are, they have been moved to the police department. So our security personnel uh, will not be doing other duties that they formerly were doing. They will be focused on assisting officers and making sure that uh, visitors that are coming to campus are funneled into the main office um, and not entering in from other doorways. You mentioned vestibules be uh, put in. Mm -hmm. What's the status of that? How long is that all? Is that going to be in every school? And how long is that going to take? Or what are we well, that's actually in the, 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 proposed, the new proposal for the new bond. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you.